of Cuba. The people of Cuba are so kind and so generous and so open. Um, they were very respectful to us while we were there, especially when it came to like race relations. I felt the most comfortable in Cuba than I have in a lot of countries that I visited. Because of the revolution and the fact that they fought for equality, you can't really tell who's who in Cuba. The only time that I can say that I actually felt some type of racial inequality or some type of like racial funny business was actually when I went to the hotels that were in the really popular touristy area of Old Havana. People who stay in the hotels happen to have a little bit more money um, and one thing that I did notice is that a lot of the people that were working the manual jobs like people that were working in the bathroom or that were doing janitorial work um, they were darker people and the people who were up at the front desk and people that were interacting with the actual customers, those happened to be the lighter Cubans. I don't know if that just happened to be a weird coincidence, but I know that it made me feel funny when I walked in. Outside of that though, as far as on the streets and walking around and stuff, I got a bunch of love. Although a lot of people think that Cuba is communist, it actually borders more along the lines of socialism. At one point, communism was obviously the main goal, um, but it seems as though the country of Cuba never really made it all the way there. Their laws are changing to allow a little more flexibility in terms of what people can and can't do with starting their own businesses, and they're able to bring in more money. Another thing that I noticed about the Cuban people is that they're super, super helpful and humble. Based on a conversation that I had with our host, Alberto, he was saying that the reason why this is ingrained in the Cuban culture is because nobody has to want for anything. The Cuban people are taken care of. They have their health insurance, they have their education that's provided for by the state. If you want, want it, you can have it. While we were there, we didn't see kids begging on the street. We didn't see any homeless people. We didn't see any crazy people. It was so safe. I, it was like nothing I'd ever really seen before. I, you could look for them and you probably wouldn't be able to find them. Cuba felt super safe to me. Unlike some of the other countries where I visited, I didn't feel the need to like hold my purse tight or constantly be looking over my shoulder. I didn't see a lot of officers, which at first I thought was really weird, but I brought this to a conversation that I'd had with Alberto, and he actually told me that the officers were there, but you just couldn't see them because they were plainclothes officers. He was smart like that. No one's carrying guns and things like that, so that intimidation factor that some people think is super powerful and effective, like, <clears throat> that man called Trump, um, not always the case. When I was speaking about the currency, I kind of touched on the idea of public transportation versus the taxi. When it comes to public transportation, you have a couple of options. You have the bus, your feet, I'll be, and then you could take a cocoa taxi or you could take a regular taxi. We opted to take the bus a lot because it was more fun that way. We took a cocoa taxi once just to experience it because it was super cute. And then we took a taxi on a couple of occasions. Just to take a bus in Cuba cost five CUPs, like five cents, versus taking a taxi everywhere, which from where we were staying in Vedado would have cost 10 CUCs. Uh, one thing that I should mention about the taxi is the fact that they have the regular yellow taxis, which I believe are regulated by the government, and then people can actually be their own taxis, almost like Uber. The people that have these really nice antique cars or vintage cars, they fix them up, they make them super bedazzly so that they catch people's attention, and then you can ride them, but at a cost, of course. <laughs> as far as finding your way around Havana, the streets in Cuba aren't like typical streets like they would be here in the city, where when they have the numbers, they put them in sequential order. So it's not like first street, second street, third street, fifth street, no. They do it in pairs. So every time you're the next street over, the number is gonna be, it's gonna skip a number. So it'll be like one, three, five, seven. That's something that's probably a little important to know because every once in a while when somebody would give us a street number, we would be looking for an even number, but the even number didn't exist. 
engaging with locals if you're engaging with the locals it's great to have conversation but if they start to tell you about a specific bar that they want you to come with them to um like super friendly like i don't know that i would necessarily do it because you'll probably get got not in a way that they're gonna like rob you or anything but you may end up paying for a couple of drinks or maybe they'll end up having dinner on you and i say that because it happened to me <laughs> There was a guy named Johnny who was a musician and we were talking about music and he was talking to me about a festival or concert that was supposed to be going there. He told me that he had a ticket, he would write it down on the ticket, but the ticket and his pen and stuff was in a bar across the street. Long story short, we went to the bar, he wrote the thing down on a piece of paper and in the meantime I ended up paying for his drink. If I wasn't with Nick I probably wouldn't have done it, but I was with my husband and he's my protector. So. I felt good and I was also covered by the blood of Jesus. Every once in a while somebody will come, if you're in the cigar factory area near uh, El Capitolio, people will come up to you talking about today is a very special day, there's a cigar festival that's happening, come back here to get some cigars, yada yada yada. Um, that happened to us on two occasions but when we came looking for the cigar festival there wasn't a cigar festival to the point where we were walking around almost for like 40 minutes we stopped and we asked the cop about the cigar festival he had no idea what we were talking about it wasn't until a friend of mine actually ended up visiting Cuba after uh, our trip and we were comparing trips he said that somebody mentioned the same thing to him about a cigar festival but he actually got got like they overpaid for their cigars or something so if somebody comes up to you talking about a cigar festival don't believe it now to the fun stuff like dancing the first thing that we did was visit la fac not fac la fac f-a-c which stands for la fabrica de arte cubana oh they call it the factory that if you don't want to go around saying fat, 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 just ask for the factory. That space is like kind of a one size fits all fun situation. It was a bar, it was a nightclub, it was a museum, it was a social hangout, there were a couple restaurants inside. The place was humongous. The only thing is though, um, they are only open from Thursday to Sunday. If you're in the market for some free fun, then one of the things you probably wanna do is just take a simple walk or run down the Malecon. This is what it looks like. Then the next thing I would probably suggest is the beach. Based on what I've seen, a lot of people who visit Cuba really don't have time to go to the beach unless you are in Cuba for an extended amount of time. The Beaches are probably a little further out, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. The one that we opted to go to was Playa del Este, which was recommended to us through our host, Alberto. One thing that I would highly suggest doing while in Cuba that isn't free fun per se, but it is cheap fun, and it also gives you a really good idea of old Havana, Havana itself, um, is doing a bus tour. You're able to purchase the ticket straight on the bus. It's 10 CUCs, which I think was a really great price considering the fact that it was hop on, hop off all day from like eight to four or eight to five or something like that. So if you are looking for one thing that will allow you to see a lot of the main attractions, even if you're not able to physically get off the bus to walk inside and see the exhibits or whatnot, the bus tour is the way to go. My last suggestion for a really fun thing that we really enjoy doing is El Cañonismo. Back in the day there was a curfew on Havana. In order to let people know that the curfew was starting, they would sound off some cannons. So what they've done now is basically taken that time and they've turned it into a little show. Even though the cannons go off at night, you can still visit during the day and see the exhibits. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do it based on all the other stuff that we were doing. But um, at night, there are really, really beautiful views of Havana. It's all starlight twinkly and stuff. It's really, really pretty. So if you're looking for a really great nighttime view of Havana, you definitely want to go to El Cañonismo, especially if you want to learn a little history and enjoy yourself in the process. If time would have allowed, I would have loved to see more of the country because everything that I've spoken on is based on my experience in Old Havana. Even within the same country, you have different cultures. Think about here in the States, East Coast versus West Coast culture. 
very significantly different. The only other thing that I really wanted to do was go to a cigar factory, uh, which we were able to go to a cigar factory, but it wasn't an operating cigar factory. One thing I will mention is that it is a little harder to get some resources. Obviously, if you are in a society where things are rationed, in some way, shape, or form, not saying that they're handing in meal tickets to buy their food. That's not what the situation is. But I will say that when Nick and I first arrived in Cuba, it took us uh, almost a full day and a half to get water. When we went to the stores, we weren't able to get regular spring water. Uh, they, all they had was carbonated water. <laughs> and when we mentioned this to our host, they said that apparently the entire province or whatever they call them had run out. We checked other bars, other restaurants. We'd walked at little like mom and pops. We went to two big grocery stores. There wasn't water, any water anywhere in, in our immediate proximity, I should say, in Vedado. Our host, Alberto, volunteered to get some water for us when he was going to Miramar the next day. And he got us like, two really big uh, three liter jugs. But it is something to also keep in mind. Whenever you want to get certain things, you may not have it as readily available. Well guys, that concludes this episode of Querrica TV and your travel guide to Cuba. We hope that you found it really informative. I know that it was a little long, but I feel as though these are all things that I would have loved to know exactly before planning or leaving for Cuba and things that I also felt were really interesting and important points to share with people who may be considering visiting as well. For those of you who are considering going to Cuba, I hope that it inspires you to just book your ticket. Do it! If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to know more about the things that happened while on our trip, check out our travel vlog from our Cuba travels right here. We appreciate you for watching. Until the next time, live rich and happy dream chasing. Bye! One, you do need to obtain a license. Even though the policy has changed, that still holds valid. You still have to visit the OFAC or use to find really cheap travel tickets is travelpirates.com. Mm, mm, mm. I love Travel Pirates. My other go-to site is secretflying.com. <laughs> En el barrio La Cachimba se ha formado la corredera. Allá fueron los sombreros con sus campanas, sus sirenas. Allí fueron los sombreros con sus campanas, sus sirenas. Ay, mamá, ¿qué pasó?